All right, so welcome back to our third video on absolute value equations. We are going to be talking about special cases in this video. There are a couple of special cases that we do need to cover. So let's just jump right in. All right, so I have here the absolute value of 3 minus 3x three is equal to 0. Uh, the reason why this is a special case is because it's equal to 0. The absolute value is already alone, and it's equal to 0. Let me show you why this is a special case. We see an absolute value, it's already alone, and so that means that we can split this into two equations, right? We could say that, well, 3 minus 3x equals a positive 0, right? That's normally what we've been doing, which is weird to say positive 0. And then we could also say 3 minus 3x equals a negative 0, Aww. which is also weird because we've never heard of 0 being a positive or a negative number before. Well, that's because it's not. The zero is the dividing line between all of the negative numbers and all the positive numbers. Uh, it it, it kind of just is that wall between them. And so it, zero is neither negative, and it's also not positive. So this is already weird to write out to begin with. Um, so I'm just going to kind of follow through with it, because this is what most students will do on their first attempt on a problem like this. So we're going to go ahead, go ahead and solve it, uh, and we're going to see what we get. Okay. Get our lollipop because we are solving, and we are going to go through sad Meg uh, because we are solving, which means to undo our di addition subtraction first. Let's identify our parts. We have our variable here. Our coefficient is negative 3, and our constant is a positive 3. All right, so let's get rid of our constant, undo our addition subtraction. Positive 3, we're going to get rid of that by? Subtraction property of equality. Subtraction property of equality. Subtract 3 off of both sides. 3 minus 3. Zero. is going to be 0. We're going to bring everything else down. Nice and neat. Negative 3x equals 0 minus 3, which is a negative 3. Now you can get rid of that coefficient really quick. We're going to get rid of the coefficient. We're undoing our multiplication and division. Because this is multiplication, we are going to use the division property of equality. Division property of equalities is correct. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. x equals negative 3 divided by negative 3 is? One. one. So that's what we're left with. There's one of our solutions. Now normally we're used to seeing two solutions because we go over to this other equation and we solve it. Now this is where it's going to get kind of weird. Let's go ahead and just try it out. Okay? I'm going to do what I know. All right, so we got our variable still. We got our coefficient and our constant all the same as before. We are going to get rid of our constant by using the subtraction property of equality. Three my, uh, Three minus three. Minus three is zero. We bring down the negative three x. But this is what's weird, and, and some students might have questions about it, but negative zero minus three? Negative three, or is it really negative three? It's just, I mean, because there's no such thing as positive or negative zero, it's just zero, right? We're just going to say negative three. Division property of equality says divide by this negative three here to get one. And we get x equals negative three divided by three is one. Huh? But what just happened? It's the same. So how many solutions do we have? We have one solution because both of these solutions are the same. We have one solution. That solution is, is one. Let me show you what, what's really going on here. Okay, I'm going to bring this down here. Let me show you on the number line. Remember that absolute value measures the distance from zero, right? Uh, we're basically saying this right here, how far away is that from zero, but the distance has to be zero. Okay, normally, if this were like a 2, right, we'd be, let's draw my little character here. I, I'm here on 0. If, if this were 2, the absolute value of, of, of this would have to be 2, which means I could travel in this direction 1, 2, or I could travel in this direction 1, 2, and I could go either 2 in this, this direction or 2 in this direction, which would leave me with two solutions. The problem with this special case is that the distance I travel is 0. So if I'm not traveling anywhere, where am I? I'm in, I'm just, I'm not, I know I'm at zero, but just for the sake of this problem, uh, how many solutions would I have? One. I'm only going to have one solution because I can't travel anywhere. Wherever this expression is at on the number line, it's not traveling anywhere. It's just going to stay in one spot, which is why we end up with just one solution. Moral of this story is that absolute values that are equal to zero have one solution. Do I still have to solve them? Uh, you still have to solve it because we do have to solve for that one solution. It's a good question. So we're still going to just set 3 minus 3x equals 0 and solve that one equation. Uh, you could set up the negative 0 as well, but you're going to quickly realize that you're going to get to the same solution here. So 
Uh, that's our that's our solution. X equals one. Now, do I here's the other question. Do I need the funky chicken brackets, the curly brackets, to represent my solution here? You don't have to, but it couldn't hurt. It won't hurt. You could do the curly brackets to show that you have one solution, but because you have one solution, you could write just x equals 1, and we'd be happy with that as well. Let's move on to our next special case. All right, so here we have an absolute value of 2.2y minus 4.4, and then when the absolute value stops, we have plus 5.5 equals 5.5. Um, well, I guess I have to do some solving here, right? Uh, normally, we'd go through GEMDAS to make sure everything's simple on the left-hand side, this expression, and also on the right-hand side. It's already simplified for us. Uh, now we're going to go through SADMEG and solve. SADMEG tells me to do my, uh, undo all my subtraction and addition first. Uh, because I'm solving, we're going to go ahead and uh, lollipop. And we're going to undo all of our addition and subtraction. Uh, I see there's a subtraction here because I do work from left to right. Um, but I also notice that it's in grouping symbols. And SADMEG tells me to do my grouping symbols last. So we aren't going to work inside the grouping symbols and try solving that yet. We're just working on things outside the absolute value. So I see a plus 5.5. So I'm going to undo the plus by subtraction property of equality. using the subtraction property of equalities and subtract 5.5 from both sides. 5.5 uh, minus 5.5 is going to be 0. zero but we're not writing that. No, they're definitely not writing that. We got the absolute value of 2.2y still minus 4.4. Don't forget that absolute value sign. Uh, equals 5.5 minus 5.5 is zero. zero. And this is where our red flag should be going off because I just ran into a zero, right? I have an absolute value equal to zero, which means that wherever this is at on the number line, it's not traveling left or right from there. It's going to be standing on one spot on the number line, which means how many solutions am I going to have? One. Just one. And even if you did set this up at this point, I see that we do have absolute values. I know that I can split that into two equations now. If you even follow the, wow, if you even follow here, there's no multiplication or division to undo outside the grouping symbols, no exponents, and then we move on to our grouping symbols. That means now we can split this into two equations to get it out of the absolute value. So let's do that. 2.2y minus 4.4. Well, that can be 0. And do I have to write another equation? No, no. Such thing as a negative zero. Yeah, I could rewrite it and say, well, 2.2y minus 4.4 equals a negative zero, but there's no such thing as a negative zero. So I'm already, I've already shown you guys that this is one solution, so I should only have one equation. Right? So let's solve that real quick. Lollipop, because we're solving, and then undoing our subtraction and addition and multiplication division and all that. Here's the variable I want to get alone. There's my coefficient. There's my constant. Get rid of the constant by addition property of equality. Addition, that's right. Add 4.4 to both sides. For negative 4.4 4 plus 4.4 4 is 0. Bring down 2.2y equals 4.4. 4.4, because 0 plus 4.4 4 is 4.4. 4. And now we have to get rid of that coefficient, so we're going to use the division, division property of equality. Divide by 2.2 .2 on both sides. And please don't make a mistake here. What is 2.2 .2 divided by 2.2? 2 .2? One. Just one. Most common mistake, 4.4 .4 divided by 2.2 .2 .2 is just 2. It's not 2.2. .2. Yes, we know that 2 goes into 4 twice and 2 goes into 4 twice. But this is not <laughs> dividing by 2. This is dividing by 2.2. 4.4 4 divided by 2.2. .2. You can check it out. Go plug it into your calculator. This is just 2. two. Right, not 2.2. .2. So there's a solution. Do I need to go look for another solution? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, because absolute values that are equal to zero only have one solution. So there's our solution again. Oh, they're special. You can just write y equals two, but it's also perfectly fine to write that in a set notation as well. But it's just one solution. We usually only use the set notation when we have more than one solution. Cool. All right, well, that was a special case. So if something equals, if the absolute value signs are alone and they end up equaling zero, then you only have to solve it once because there's no such thing as negative zero. So let's talk about another scenario. 
All right, so I look at this equation on the board and it says the absolute value of x minus 4 equals negative 12. You're like, well, what makes that special? Well, I don't know. The absolute values are alone, so that tells me I can split my equation, right? Right? So I have to find two answers. So I have to ask myself, the absolute value of what equals negative 12? And somebody might say, oh, it's 12. The problem is the absolute value of 12 is 12 because absolute values are always positive numbers. So if I take the absolute value of 12, I would not get negative 12. So they're like, well, then it must be negative 12. If I put an absolute value of negative 12 in there, remember the absolute value is the distance something is from zero and it's always a positive number. So the absolute value of negative 12 is also 12. And so really there is nothing that I can put in there that will give me negative 12 because nothing inside the absolute values can equal a negative number. If I have a negative 5 in the absolute values, that ends up equaling positive 5. It doesn't matter what's in there. Whatever comes out has to be a positive. So because I cannot put anything in here that would give me a negative, I can't actually split this equation. I can't do this equation. So this is a special case because there is no solution. In fact, if you want to get technical, the technical word is this is a contradiction. Contradiction. It's a contradiction because it's saying that this equals that, and we saying it can't. It's not possible because absolute values are always positive. And because this is not going to give me a negative, that answer is a lie. It's a contradiction. It's contradicting itself. It's a lie. It's no solution. So if I see a negative 12 and the absolute values alone, then I know I don't have to go any further. It's no solution. But this is where we're going to trick you. And this is where, not necessarily we, but you're going to see the trick is this. They'll give you a problem and you'll say, okay, it's positive. All right. I can split this equation. But wait a second. Absolute value is not alone. Right? So first I got to do my sad make. Right? Mm -hmm. Sad Meg. Oh, poor Sad Meg. And if I have any Megs in the class, I'm sorry. You're not sad. This is just another Sad Meg. All right. And so I do my abs I do my lollipop. But um, boom, boom. And so I say, okay. I see. I have to do in Sad Meg. I do subtraction or addition, whatever I see first. And I do see a subtraction here, but inside the grouping symbols. <coughs> excuse me. And grouping symbols come last. So I can't do that subtraction, but I do see I have a plus 15. How would I get rid of a plus 15? Subtraction property of equalities. I would subtract 15 from both sides. So 15 minus 15 equals 0. And I don't need to write that down because that's just silly. I mean, you're probably 15 or 14. You don't tell people you're 14 plus 0 because they look at you like you were crazy. So I get 2.98n minus 2.15 equals, well, 5 minus negative 15 is negative 10. Okay, the absolute values are alone, but wait a second. Uh, uh, what does this equal? It equals negative 10. Can an absolute value, anything I put in here, can it ever become negative? No. No, there's nothing I can substitute in here, no value at all that I can put in here that would equal 0. So I'm like, OK, I mean, it would equal positive or a negative number. So because of that, I know I have no solution. So again, this is just going to be no solution. Also, some people put it in as no soul, right? And then the big technical word is contradiction because Equal sign means whatever's on one side equals to whatever's on the other side. And because this can never be, then this is a lie. Math just lied to you, and math can never lie, right? Because if it says it's equal, then they're equal. And since this cannot be equal, it lied to you, it's a contradiction. All right, which leads us to the last problem, and Ms. Nelson's going to jump in on this, I believe. Because some people will say, oh, I'm done, right, Mr. Nelson, because it equals negative 2? Can't so equal done. negative. I'm done. I'm walking out. But Mr. Craig would be wrong. Oh, man. Because 
You can't make that decision until what? Oh yeah, the absolute value! The absolute value has to be alone first. And it's not because we have this minus 10 right here. So we go through SADMEG to start solving for that first. We need to get the absolute value grouping symbols alone. We just, anything that's multiplying, dividing, addition, subtraction outside of that needs to be done away with first. And so in this case, because I see absolute value, that's what I'm going to try to isolate first to get that alone. And so I need to get rid of this minus 10. So let's go ahead and solve that really quick. We get rid of minus 10 by using the addition property of equality. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0. Let's bring down that absolute value. 2n minus 4 equals, and negative 2 plus 10 is 8, a positive 8. So now we have the absolute value alone, and it equals a positive 8, which means how many solutions should we be looking for? We need to be looking for two, two solutions. The absolute value is not equal to 0, otherwise we'd be looking for one solution. And if this was a negative of any number, then we'd be looking for no solutions. We wouldn't have to look any further than this. But because we're at the point where we have a positive number, that means on the number line, I could be 8 in this direction, or I could be 8 in the negative direction. 8 in the positive direction, or 8 in the negative direction, which is why we can write two equations and solve now. So don't get tripped up at the very beginning because you see a negative over here. You need to make sure that the absolute value is alone first. So because I have absolute value, that means I could be in the positive direction by positive 8. You notice I'm not writing the absolute value again because anything inside the absolute value, if that's 8 or negative 8, then it will come out as positive. So let's take care of the negative side as well. Negative 8. And now let's just solve. Lollipop. Got my variable, my coefficient, and my constant. Get rid of the constant by undoing subtraction and addition. Add 4 to both sides is the addition property of equality. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so I'm just going to bring down the 2n. Uh, 0, don't need to write that, equals 8 plus 4 is 12. Uh, now I need to get rid of the coefficient by undoing multiplication and division. In this case, we're going to divide both sides by 2. That's the division property of equality. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Leaves me with just n equals 12 divided by 2 is 6. So that's one of my solutions, n equals 6. Now let's hop on over to this side. Lollipop, because we're solving. Oh, Identif oh, oh. <laughs> Identify your variable, your coefficient, your constant. We are going to undo addition and subtraction. So we're going to get rid of this constant first by adding 4 to both sides, just like we did on the other equation. Uh, that's going to give us 0 there, which is nice. So we're left with 2n equals a negative 8 plus 4 is a negative 4. Now we're going to do our division property of equality to get rid of the 2, the coefficient. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That leaves me with n equals negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So I have two solutions here, and we, should, we could substitute those back in to make sure they are solutions. But we have n equals two solutions, which means we have to use set notation going from least to greatest. So don't write the 6 first. Let's write the negative 2 first. Make it nice and clean. And 6 and then close up that set notation. All right, so there are our solutions. So big thing here, again, we just got done with talk to special cases, and we don't know what it is, but when we talk special cases like no solution, our students tend to think that every problem after it is a no solution, okay, or a one solution. Uh, make sure that you're double checking. If your absolute value is positive, you have two solutions. If your absolute value is zero, you have one solution, and if your absolute value is negative, no solutions. And that is going to be it for this video. If you have questions, you need to ask them uh, so that we can get to those answers as soon as possible.